Welcome back guys. Today I am going to work on a new sensor that is AIS 328 DQTR. To gain more knowledge about this sensor let's have a look over the website that is controlleverything.com and here search on this for this sensor that is AIS 328 DQTR. So let's see what we got here for this particular sensor and it's a high performance ultra low power 3 axis accelerometer. As you can see these plus minus 2, 4 and 8 G are the dynamically selectable full scale range of this sensor accelerometer. Also good range of extension for the temperature embedded self test, 16 bit output data and ROH is compliant. This is the address as you can see you can purchase this sensor from here. For the interfacing today I will be requiring a Raspberry Pi and a Python code. So go to resource tab. And here comes the Python code sample for AIS 328DQTR. You can download the code as zip file from here. You can also have the opportunity to download the code from GitHub repository that is control everything community. Now, what we require to make a successful working for this sensor that is connection, hardware connections, hardware products. Let's have a look over that also. This here is our sensor AIS. 328 DKTR that's a accelerometer. Now this is a Raspberry Pi and these are the GPR pins of the Raspberry Pi. Now to make a connection among the sensor and the Raspberry Pi we need an I2C sheet which is available on the website controleverything.com and you can purchase it from there also. Now gently place the I2C shield over the GPR pins of the Raspberry Pi. Now the reason we are using this I2C shield is to make connections with other I2C devices a lot easier. Now this is a connecting cable. Make this connection uh, among the sensor and the cable and while making this connection make sure that the ground terminal of the sensor should be connected to the ground wire of the cable and similarly for the I2C shield like this. Now we need to power up our Raspberry Pi and here comes a micro USB cable into the picture. Now gently insert it over the power jack. So we are done with this connection. Finally we need to make the internet connection with the Raspberry Pi and the sensor and for that an ethernet cable is required as you can see. Gently insert it over the ethernet jack. In case if you don't have that you can also use a nano Wi-Fi wireless adapter which might come in handy and it also might save your day. So, we are done with the connections part. What we require is a code so that we can interface with the Raspberry Pi and sensor and let's show the working. Well, the requirement is of a Python code so that we can interface our sensor with the Raspberry Pi. So for that, log in to github.com and here search for the repository that is control everything community which you are able to see on my screen. Now click over it and here search for the sensor and here we go. So AIS 328DQTR accelerometer. Now, this is the Python code. But before going to the Python code explanation, let's have a look over the instruction which says that we have to download and install Assembus library on the Raspberry Pi. And this is the link which will help us to guide through entire steps, step by steps installation. And let's have a go through look so that we can identify ourselves for that. So, all commands, information installation steps are being provided here. Now this is the command to run the python code. I will get back to the python code so that we can explain it better. It's a .py extension file. First of all we have imported SMBus and time libraries as we have mentioned earlier. Also the address of the sensor is 0x18. Now for the writing part we have selected control register 1 that is the address 0x20 and 0x27 comprises power on mode, data selection rate equal to 50 hertz and xyz axis enabled and the command goes here. Now here the address of the register control register 4 is 0x23 and here the command send is 0x30 which goes for continuous update and full scale selection range plus minus 8g. Now the writing part is here. As we are done with the writing command, now we want to have the data read for the x, y and z axis and we are reading data for x axis that is 0x28, 2 bytes are being read here and the conversion takes place here which is according to the data sheet. Now similarly we have followed this suit for y axis here 
z axis as we are done with the data calculation and the conversion we want to display the results on the output data uh, in the form of output data on the screen and it goes for acceleration in x y and z axis all the relevant information is being provided here as you can see percentage d raw values are there so now we want to have a practicality uh, for this code in the form of working let's see well let's have a look over the working so for that copy this entire python code and open up the terminal for the raspberry pi here create a new file dot py extension for the python and here paste the entire code and save it now this is the command to run the code as you notice and here we go the data is being displayed it's almost stable for x y and z axis acceleration now when i try to rotate the sensor you can notice the relevant values the changes in the x y and z axis of rotation so this is how a python code works now what do we require is to see the benefits the applications of this sensor the ais328 dqtr is an ultra low power high performance three axis linear accelerometer with a digital serial interface SPI standard output. An I2C compatible interface is also available. The device features ultra low power operational modes that allow advanced power saving and smart sleep to wake up functions. The AIS 328D2TR has dynamic user selectable full scales of plus minus 2, 4 and 8G and it's compatible and capable of measuring accelerations with output data rates from 0.5 hertz to 1 kilohertz now the applications are telemetrics and black boxes in dash car navigation tilt inclination measurement intelligent power saving vibration monitoring and compensation and a lot more this sensor can be purchased from the website controleverything.com and the code is available on the resource tab and after that you can download it from this website. You can also have the opportunity to download the code from github repository and that is control everything community. If you have any queries you can contact on controleverything.com and you can post your comments your queries on community page. Now for articles and blogs which are relevant to this you can contact me on instructables.com and also to subscribe more video tutorials like this you can have a go through look over our youtube channel now i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you liked it so thanks a lot for watching